Uh, dear students, I welcome you to my video lectures. I'm your course instructor, Dr. Mazullah Khan. In my last lecture, we covered chapter number 13, uh, which is Capital Budgeting Techniques. In that chapter, we learned about four different uh, methods for project evaluation. The first method was payback period. The second one was IRR. The third one was NPV. And the fourth one was profitability index. Uh, today, we will solve one problem from uh, Fundamentals of Financial Management uh, by Brigham, which is again a very popular text for undergraduate students. So in this particular example, uh, problem actually, uh, we will evaluate two different projects, X and Y. Uh, the initial investment is $10,000 uh, for both projects. Uh, but the subsequent cash inflows are different. Uh, so first of all, let's uh, calculate payback period. So payback period by definition is time required to get initial investment back. And it's very, very simple to calculate. Uh, there are some limitations for this uh, technique and we will discuss it. Uh, but it's very, very simple to calculate uh, payback period. So first of all, let's plot all the cash flows. So 0, 1, two, three, and four. So at the start of the project, X, uh, the company invests $10,000. So it's a initial uh, cash outflow. That's why I represented it with a negative sign. And then 6,500, they get in the first year, and then 3,000 in the second year. 3000 in third year and then $1,000 in fourth year. My next step is actually to calculate cumulative cash flows. And I'm only concerned, I'm using actually method number one, so I'm only concerned about uh, year number one, two, three, and four. I do not include year number uh, zero, which is like uh, start of the project. So in the first year, I'm getting 6,500. And then at the end of the second years, in total, I'm getting 9,500, which is 6,500 plus 3,000. At year number three, I'm getting 12,500, which is year number one plus year number two plus year number three. So as you can see, the initial investment of $10,000 I get that between two and three years. Uh, so my payback period for project X is equal to two years. So it's a little more than two years plus $500. So as you can see, at the end of second year, I'm getting 9,500. So there I need an additional $500 to get my initial investment back. My initial investment was $10,000. So 500 divided by 3,000. Why 3,000? Because in year number three, I'm getting $3,000 in total. So how much time will it take me to recover $500? It's straightforward. So two plus 0 0.17, I already calculated it for you. So my payback period for project X is equal to 2.17. Okay, similarly, you can easily calculate a uh, payback period for project Y. Payback period for project Y is equal to, I already did that, it's 2.86 years. So let's not forget to put units here. So if payback period is 
our only criteria to pick any project. Of course, project X, we get our initial investment back a little bit quicker compared to project Y because 2.17 is less than 2.86. So based on this criteria, project X is more feasible. Okay, in the next step, let's calculate IRR. So IRR. How do we calculate it? So IRR is the rate by definition. It's the rate at which your NPV is equal to zero. So that's a definition. So internal rate of return is the rate at which your net present value is zero. So how do we calculate uh, IRR? Of course, first of all, I have to calculate NPVs. So NPVs, and then I start actually with, with a random number. So let's start with, let's pick any rate actually. So rate is equal to 10%. So NPV of project X is equal to, so the time line is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. $10,000 is the initial investment, then 6500 3000 here, 3000 here, and then 1000 And as I told you in my lectures, in order to solve problems, uh, you have to be very, very systematic. So now my task is actually to discount all these cash flows. And how do we do that? It's again very, very simple technique. Either you use uh, uh, tables or you can use uh, your calculators, it's up to you. So 6,500 for one year and the rate here, I'm assuming suppose 0 0.1. So you're working with, with, with any random rate uh, and then we will adjust the rate according to the NPV and I'll show you the technique how do we do that and then 3000 so this is for one year and then 3000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to power 2 plus 3000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to power 3 and then 1000 divided by 1 plus 0 0.1 raised to power 4 and then of course from the whole expression we have to subtract the initial cash outflow because it's a net present value so we have to take initial cash we have to subtract uh, the initial cash uh, out, outflow if you do all the math uh, I have already done that so let me copy those numbers to you here so at 10% the net present value is 1325 0.39 so NPV of project X at 10% is this if you use if you see here NPV my target is target is 0 of NPV 0 why NPV 0 because IRR uh, technically is the rate at which NPV is zero. So as you can see my NPV is more than zero so I have to bring it down. So bring it down. Bring it, bring NPV down. So if I would like to bring my NPV down it means that I have to use which implies use higher rate. And why high rate? Because the relationship is relationship between NPV and rate is inverse. And why inverse? Because as, as, as you can see here, 
the rate is appearing in denominator so if I increase the rate of course the MPV will go down so let's uh, try 20% so MPV project X at 20% I already did these uh, calculations so in this expression in the whole expression replace 0 0.1 with 0 0.2 so your NPV at 20% for project X is minus 281.64 so I am now in a better position to calculate my IRR through interpolation So let me plot the numbers and then it's easy to calculate uh, IRR. So at 0 0.1 my NPV was 1325.39 here as you can see here. Now at 0 0.2 my NPV was minus 281.64 here. In order to calculate IRR my NPV has to be 0 because that's the definition of IRR. So the difference between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 is of course 0 0.1 and the difference between 1325.39 and 281.64 is 1607.02. The difference between 1325.39 and NPV of 0 is of course 1325.02. Nine. So it's, it's very simple now. Mechanically, what you can think anything with the largest square bracket they appear in numerator and anything outside in denominator. Equal 1325.39 divided by 1607.02. This one is equal to 0 0.0825. Okay, my apology. So, okay, let's uh, let me erase this. Okay, thirteen twenty-five point three nine divided by sixteen zero seven point zero two multiplied by zero point zero point one okay so the value you can think about it is a total difference of 1607 between the NPVs accounts for 0 0.1 so 1607.02 accounts for 0 0.1 so how much percentage uh, will will it be equal to let's say if the NPV difference is 1325.39 that one is if I do the math it's 0 0.0825 so my IRR is equal to x 0 0.1 plus x which is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.0825 this one is equal to 0 0.1825 which is 18.25 percent. So IRR for project X is 18.25 and similarly if you calculate IRR for project Y and if you use the same technique it's actually 14 point sorry this one is Fifteen point three eight. Fifteen point three eight percent. 
Now, as I told you in my lecture that using interpolation, it's actually an approximation. Uh, it's, it's, it gives an idea, but it's not the exact uh, rate. So how do we calculate IERR in Microsoft Excel? I already told you about uh, the technique. It's super simple. So for example, in Project X and Project Y, the cash flows, I already uh, punched them into uh, Microsoft uh, Excel. So how do I calculate IRR? So you start with equal sign, IRR, double click on the IRR, and then as you can see, we have to choose values. So please do not forget to include your initial uh, outflow. Comma, and then guess. Guess can be any random number. So 0 0.1, suppose 10%. Uh, and if I press enter, it's 18%. Uh, if I increase actually the decimal points, the exact rate is 18.03. And if I copy the formula to this side, you can see that the exact rate for project Y is 14.96. So let me write it down for you. So if I use Microsoft Excel, This one is 18.03% and this one for Excel is 14.96%. So whatever we calculated actually it's an approximation but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. It's not that bad. Okay. So my next task is to calculate NPV. Now NPV at sorry so let me okay. so NPV at twelve percent and why twelve percent if you go to the question again says here that the required rate of return is 12% right here so we can easily calculate NPVs for project X and what you need to do in this expression sorry uh, right here right here. So instead of 0 0.1, you put 0 0.12 for 12%. And if I calculate NPV for project X, I already did that for you. It's uh, okay. It's actually 966.01 and NPV for project Y is 630.72 okay profitability index again simple technique for profitability index the way we calculate it is of course, we have to sum all cash inflows, cash inf inflows, uh, and of course, discounted one. And then I have to subtract the initial cash, sorry, divided by initial cash uh, outflow. And the way we do it is, of course, my NPV for project X is how much it's uh, 10,966.01 and then I divided by okay so this is the NPV sorry and then the profitability index for project X would be 10,966 divided by 0 0.1 divided by $10,000 and how much is it so it's actually 1.097 
and since NPV for project Y is 10,630, you can calculate it easily, 0.72. My profitability index for project Y is 10,630.72 divided by 10,000, which is 1.063. Uh, Okay, so based on profitability index, as you can see, uh, NPV, uh, sorry, profitability index of project X is higher than profitability index of project Y. So pro this project is better compared uh, to project Y based on profitability index. So if you are using profitability index as a decision criteria, project X is better. Okay, let's go back to the question. Okay, so we did uh, everything in uh, part A. Part B says, which product projects should be accepted if they are independent? So please pay attention to word independent. So if the projects are independent, it means that the selection of one project does not affect the selection of other project. So both projects can be actually selected. They, they can be chosen, let's say, if they meet uh, the criteria. So suppose IRR, based on IRR, as you can see, IRR for project, for project X was close to 18% and for project Y was uh, 15.38% and in Excel we calculated like similar numbers. So the required rate of return as you can see from the question it was 12%. So since IRR for project X is greater than 0.12 or 12% project X is accepted and for project Y IRR is sorry greater than 0.12 which is 12 percent again project Y is accepted so let's say if there is no budget constraint and if the projects are independent of course we select uh, both uh, projects based on NPV the decision criteria is accept if NPV is greater than or equal to zero. So in both, uh, for both uh, project X and project Y, NPV is greater than zero, so we accept uh, both projects based on NPV. Profitability index, the decision criteria is accept if profitability index is greater than or equal to one. In both cases, as you can see, the profitability index for project X and project Y is greater than one so both projects are accepted now let's go back to question again which project should be accepted if they are mutually exclusive mutually exclusive mean that if we choose one project we cannot choose the other one we can select only one project so based on IRR based on IRR okay so based on IRR since IRR for project X is greater than IRR for project Y so we accept project X as simple as that uh, based on NPV of course NPV of project X is greater than NPV of project Y so except project X and similarly profitability index 
of project X is greater than profitability index for project Y. So except project Y. Sorry, project X. So as you can see, on all three criteria, project X is better than project Y. So overall, on all criteria, project X is better than project Y. Okay, now some of the questions we have to use uh, Microsoft uh, Excel. Now in part D it says how might a change in the required rate of return produce a conflict between NPV and IRR ranking of the two projects? Would there be a conflict if the required rate of return were 5%? So as you can see here in the question, it's already given that the required rate of return is 12%. So 12% return was required. Uh, but what happens, let's say, if the required rate of return is 5%? Now, in order to solve these questions, uh, what you need to do, actually, you have to make uh, what they call NPV profile. Okay, so NPV profile, how do we do that? NPV profile is actually plotting NPV for different rates. And when I say rates, it's the required rate of return. And how do we do that? I tried actually to do it in my last lecture, but somehow my uh, Excel was acting a little bit funny. So let me do it for you now. Okay, so let's do that. So I have already my data here. And since I will be doing like calculating NPV for different rates, so rate here, and let me plot uh, NPVs. So NPV for X, project X. And then we have NPV for project Y. Okay. And I'll start with any, any random rate. So I'll start with 1% and let's uh, 2%. And the way you copy this is actually, let's say, if you would like to increment it by 1%, uh, select both cells and then drag it down and I'm going to let's say 30% only okay now in order to calculate NPV um, you can simply put equal sign NPV and please pay attention in, as I uploaded the short video do not make any mistakes so I'll choose this rate and then comma and then I will choose only the cash flows in year number one two three and four log that cell and then I have to add back sorry take into account the initial outflow which means that I have to subtract it so I put a plus sign because there is a negative sign already uh, for the initial cash outflow so it already takes uh, into account the negative sign okay so let me convert it into currency sign and what I can do actually and I have to lock this uh, initial outflow as well. And the reason I locked it, because we will be using this data for all rates of return. So the only changing variable is actually the rate of return. So that's why the E2 uh, cell is not locked. Everything else is locked. And I have to double click on this one. Everything is copied. Again, NPV for project Y rate and then we have to choose only um, the last four cash flows log that cell and then subtract the initial outflow 
and sorry, um, log that cell as well. All right, and my next task is actually once you cal uh, calculate uh, lots of net present values for different uh, rates, of, rates of return, just plot it. So go to insert, then recommended charts, and then you can pick any actually, and I would pick let's say this one. What I can do, I can actually play with it, and uh, uh, but let's not do that. Let me copy this, and we will play with it in Microsoft uh, Whiteboard. So as you can see, we have NPV for. Uh, y which is this uh, orange line and NPV for X. By definition IRR is the rate at which NPV is 0. So if you see for for uh, project Y it's close to here and we already calculate uh, 15 close to 15 percent of uh, internal rate of return. For project Y this is 0 actually. So for project Y as you can see the rate of return is between 17 and 19 which is close to 18 percent right here actually so this is my IRR for project X this one is in actually um, a Van Horn book it's called Fisher's a rate of intersection and uh, in uh, Bregan book actually it's called a crossover rate and if you can see the crossover rate is between 5 and 6 so between 5 and 6 somewhere over here Be sorry between 5 and 7 so if you can see for any rate less than 5 NPV for project Y is more than NPV for project X because this line is a little bit higher so the NPV of project Y is more than NPV of project X so if I summarize it for you for rates less than 5% NPV of project Y is greater than NPV of project X so we accept project Y and why is that because NPV is greater than NPV for Y is greater than NPV for X but if you see for anything beyond Fisher rate of intersection we accept actually project X. So that's why the required rate of return uh, plays a critical role in uh, project selections. Now how do we calculate actually the Fisher rate of return? We can calculate, we can actually uh, estimate it visually, so it's like an estimation. As I said, I can see that this rate is between 5 and 7. Like, yeah, if I, yeah 5 and 7. Uh, but of course you can calculate it and the, re the way you can calculate it we can do it uh, in Excel. So these are all the cash flows as you can see here. Uh, let me first of all calculate the NPVs. So NPV for project X would be NPV. I'll choose the uh, sorry I'll choose the rate first which is let's say I assume any any random rate which is like 10% uh, and NPV 
and I'll tell you why did I choose a 10 or any other, any other random number and then I have to choose all the cash flows plus the initial investment uh, outlay it's it's a plus sign but in a way I'm subtracting it and then drag okay so the rate I have to lock it because I'll be using the same rate for both projects okay let's calculate the difference between NPV of both uh, project X and project Y Y difference I'll tell you the reason uh, in a moment okay so if I go back Fisher rate of intersection or the crossover rate so Fisher rate is the rate so Fisher's rate is the rate at which NPV of project X is equal to NPV of project Y so as you can see NPV of both these projects at the intersection point is exactly the same so in other words NPV of project X minus NPV of project Y is equal to zero so that's why in Excel sheet I calculated the difference between project X and project Y now we can easily use uh, solver so go to data and I already showed you how to include this add-in uh, in one of my videos uh, so go to solver and my objective is actually to make this difference equal to zero by changing what by changing uh, the rate and when I solve it okay so you type uh, equal to one plus one okay apologies by changing the cell solve okay so let me okay I think I'm doing uh, a mistake here so let me do it again so NPV oh, okay yes Okay, let's uh, do it again. So my mistake was, let me do it again for you. So equal sign in PV rate is this one, comma, and then my numbers are plus my initial outflow. And let me do it exactly the same thing for project Y. It is this one, comma, okay, so suppose the rate was 10% here, okay, so let's do it now, I, I made a mistake actually in my formula, so go to solver, so my objective is actually to make B8, which is the difference here, equal to zero by changing what by changing the rate so my objective is actually to find out a, find out a rate at which the difference between two NPVs is zero in other words uh, both NPVs are equal and if you see here my rate is 6.2 percent so let me go back to whiteboard so the rate here is 2.19 percent let me confirm it 2. Point, oh sorry 6.2 uh, 6.21 or 22 so my bad 6. 
6.22%. Okay, and as you can visually see, actually, it's as I said, it's between 5 and 7. So, visually, uh, I can only guess, but uh, if I calculate it in Microsoft Excel, the exact rate is 6.22. I hope this will this exercise will also help you in your uh, assignment. Uh, so please watch this video carefully, and if you have any questions, uh, you can call me uh, on my WhatsApp number, or maybe you can email me. Uh, I will stop here. Uh, please do lots of exercises. Although this example was very simple. Uh, but the concept, even if you apply them to a complex problem, they are exactly the same. So, in today's video, we calculated payback period, IRR, NPV, and profitability index. Uh, then we chose actually projects as if they were independent. Um, so, based on independence criteria, both projects were actually feasible because the NPVs were more than zero. Profitability index was more than one, and IRR was more than the cutoff rate or the hurdle rate, which was 12% in this problem. Uh, but in part C, as we saw, if the both the projects were mutually exclusive, which means that we have to pick only one. If we had to pick one, based on all criteria, project X was a better option. And then in D, what we did. Uh, we actually calculated NPVs for different rates. Uh, that's called actually NPV profile. So NPV profile is the profile of any project for different uh, rates of return. And as we, as we saw in the graph, uh, for, for any rate less than six, uh, sorry, 5%, project Y was actually more feasible than project X. So beyond the Fisher rate of intersection on one side, actually one pro project is feasible. And for example, on the left side, project X was, project Y was feasible. And on the right side, project X was feasible. Again, on the left side of Fisher rate of intersection, project Y was feasible. And on the right side of the Fisher rate of intersection, project X was feasible. So. NPV profile gives you very good insights uh, into projects uh, and it gives you, it's like a sensitivity analysis of uh, NPVs. I will stop here. If you have any questions, send me an email or drop me your question on WhatsApp group. Uh, I wish you all the best for your assignment and uh, project. I will also actually upload a short video for the project uh, and will explain the details uh, about the project. So I wish you all the best for that. Uh, have a wonderful day.